guys hey guys welcome to my channel it's naima guys welcome to my channel it's naima here and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys my labor and delivery story this is all about how kaz got here well i mean we know how he got here but how he like entered the world <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started um by the way my son's name is chasm chasm jahir we call him Kaz. my little baby he is six months he just turned six months a few days ago so woo -woo, yay all praises to god um so yeah so let's go ahead and jump into the video. i wanted to do everything yeah. natural you guys i wanted to go into labor naturally i wanted to deliver naturally i didn't want <laughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to talk about your big debut. You got something to add? He want to be up in the crowd. Okay. You want to be in the spotlight? You want to steal the shine? You've been stealing the show ever since you came about. Okay, so. He like, I'm going to be in this video. So, basically, he trying to figure out how can he get to the milk. <laughs> if y'all breastfeed, y'all know the struggle the struggle okay it's very real anyways so um i wanted to do everything natural i didn't want any drugs i didn't want to be induced i didn't want any anything like let me do everything let my body do what it is designed to do okay that's how i was throughout my entire pregnancy i watched a ton of videos i was ready okay so i was diagnosed with i g u r it's basically, I think it's IGUR. It'll be across the screen. It's basically growth restriction where the baby, yeah, that's what happened. Where the baby, uh, he wants to tell his own story. Tell him how you got here. Oh, now you're shy. Okay, so basically it's growth restriction where the baby stops growing in the womb for whatever reason. They don't know the cause of it, but the baby stops growing. So they diagnosed me with that when I was 40 weeks pregnant. So throughout my pregnancy, um, I didn't gain a lot of weight. I'll try to insert some pictures. I think I gained between like 15 and 20 pounds. And throughout the entire my entire pregnancy, my doctor kept saying, well, when I hit like six months, my doctor was like, your stomach isn't as big as it should be. You haven't gained enough weight. Even when I would gain weight, like I had a big weight gain one month. I went from like, I gained like seven pounds in one month and she still was just like, your stomach hasn't grown at all. Like you are getting bigger, but your stomach is not getting bigger and I'm starting to get concerned for your baby. So towards the end of my pregnancy, I had a lot going on. I had, I had to do a lot of ultrasounds. I was going to the doctor like twice a week. I was getting ultrasound after ultrasound to check the growth of the baby. And then I was also getting those non-stress tests. And look at him y'all, look at him. He always wanna eat. Stress tests, if you guys don't know what those are, Google it, I could do a whole separate video on that. But basically they do it for, um, well I was told it was being done because at that point I was considered a high risk pregnancy. So basically what happened was I went in for my 41 week ultrasound and no. I went in for my 40 week ultrasound and my doctor was like, I wanna induce you. She hasn't, she had been trying to induce me since I was 38 weeks. So she was like, I want to induce you. I want to induce you. And I was just like, no, I want it to happen naturally. Just leave me alone. Like, no. And so when I hit 40 weeks, she was like, your baby isn't growing. I'm very concerned about your baby. I'm very, very scared. Scared. Oh, oh you think that's funny? Baby. <laughs> so basically she was just like, um, I don't think your baby is growing. So she did an ultrasound and she did measurements measurements, and she was like, your baby isn't growing. Um, your baby hasn't grown for the past two weeks. I'm starting to get concerned about your baby. So she started asking me all these questions. How's your baby's movement? Um, then she said my amniotic fluid was super, super low. And she was like, I feel like you need to be induced today right now. And so I was just like, oh my God, I started panicking. And so she um, sent me to another doctor, another office. Yes. She sent me to another office. That's his baby. She sent me to another office and had me do a more intense ultrasound, like an actual an actual ultrasound technician. So um, normally when I go and get my ultrasounds, they're like, okay, have a good day once it's over. But this time when I got my ultrasound, the ultrasound tech was like, I'm gonna have you wait in the waiting area. She was like, I wanna give you the results like within a few minutes. She was like, I'm gonna come back and get you in like 10, 15 minutes and give you the results. So I was like, what? That has never happened to me before. So I was like, okay, whatever. 
So I'm waiting in the waiting area, super nervous. Anyway, she comes back in about 10, 15 minutes. She doesn't give me any explanation. All she says is, you need to go to labor and delivery right now. <laughs> Yes, that's what happened. So she's like, you need to go to labor and delivery. Y'all, he don't want me to tell this story. Go ahead, tell him. You ain't got nothing to say. I don't want to hear all that. No. Like, per your doctor, your doctor has reviewed the results and you need to go to labor and delivery right now. So I'm just like, why? What's going on? What happened? She's like, I don't have any information for you to explain everything over there. So I'm just kind of like baffled. Like that just came out of nowhere. So I'm nervous. I'm scared. Nobody's telling me what's going on. I'm afraid to go to labor and, de and delivery because I feel like they're going to try to convince me to get induced right here, right now. I'm like, I haven't had a chance to sit down and process it. I need to talk to my husband. I'm freaking out. So y'all know what I did? I took myself home. <laughs> I went home. I called my husband freaking out. He was like, just go home. Like, I'm going to come home right now and I will meet you there. Like, just go home. So, I decided to go home. I went home and we talked about it and we prayed about it and all that good stuff. And we decided that we were going to wait it out. Booger in your nose. Can I get that boogie? Can I get that boogie, boogie, boogie? Do y'all know my doctors called me all night to the point where I have to turn my phone off? Look. Listen, I am not advising anybody to go against their doctor's orders. I'm just advising people to do what you feel is best for you and what you feel is comfortable for you. I didn't feel like it was the right time for me to go in and be induced. I felt like my son was fine and I didn't like the way the information was being presented to me and I wanted a chance to breathe. But if your doctors tell you, look, you need to get this baby out right now, don't be trying to go against that. Like, I don't advise anybody to do that. That's just what I felt like I needed to do in the moment. Trust your gut. So, oh. I went home and I turned my phone off and I went to sleep. When I woke up in the morning, y'all, I had so many emails and voicemails from various amounts of doctors telling me it is absolutely urgent. I'm not even gonna tell y'all what they told me. They told me some craziness, but they said it was absolutely urgent, urgent, that I, like urgent, <laughs> that I come in there right now and have my baby. They said they were very extremely concerned for my baby. And this is not just my doctor. These are multiple doctors coming in. Cause you know how doctors work in shifts. So basically um, the doctor that was on call would come in, review my case and then call me. So they had a couple of doctors, um, I guess overnight. So maybe like four different doctors left me messages and sent me emails. So of course I'm like, at this point, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, maybe I made the wrong choice. Maybe something is wrong. So my husband had gone to work. I call him. I'm just like, what should I do? So he's like, won't you call them back and talk to them? So I called them and they were like, we've been waiting for your call. What's wrong with your phone? Da -da -da. What's the matter? Why don't you want to come in? They were like, you need to come in right now. We're very concerned for your baby. You need to have this baby right now. Like, how are you feeling? How's the baby moving? I'm like, the baby feels fine. Everything feels fine. They're like, come in right, right now. And so they were like, um, you know, we'll take care of you. Don't worry. I know that you're probably afraid, like, but you need to come in right now. So y'all... I had my bag semi-packed, but I just, at that point, I called my mom, I was crying, I called my best friend, I was crying, I just was going, I was just having some moments, y'all, so I was like sending everybody text messages like, pray for me, pray for me, so literally packed my bag, called my husband, he came and got me, we went up there, and so we got in there and checked, and they were like, you know you're not going home today, right, you know you're having a baby today, right, like, you good on that, right, you ain't gonna try to escape, <laughs> like, I'm here now, y'all didn't get me now, so... They got me hooked up and everything, and I had to be induced. Ugh, I did not want to be induced, but I had to be induced. And there, they check me. They do an ultrasound, they check the baby, they're like, the baby is fine. But the reason why they were so concerned is because they thought my baby was under four pounds. They were like, we're so afraid because we think that your baby is under four pounds and you're full term. And so we're worried about the baby's heart condition. Um, oh yeah, and while I was doing a non-stress test a couple of times, um, they said that the baby's heart rate was dropping. So they were concerned about the baby's heart, they were concerned about the baby's oxygen, and they were concerned about the baby's weight. And so they were just like, we are just very like afraid for your baby. So they come in, they check me, and I happen to be three centimeters dilated. And so they hook me up, they're like, you're having like slight contractions right now, like do you feel them? Like, no, I don't feel anything. So they give me Pitocin. And you know, when they first induce you, they give you Pitocin, it starts to come out just a little bit, a little bit at a time. So they told me, they were like, we're only gonna give you small, small dosages because we want to, um, we want to see how the baby's heart takes it. So basically what they were afraid of, they were afraid that they were gonna give me too much Pitocin at once 
and then the baby's heart rate was going to drop and then they would have to do an emergency c-section so they wanted to see how the baby would handle contractions they're like let's give you a little bit and when your contractions start to get stronger and stronger we're going to monitor the baby's heart rate and see how the baby is doing because they were afraid he wouldn't be able to push through labor like he wouldn't be able to take contractions they thought like his heart rate was going to drop and they was going to have to do an emergency c-section so i was in there just literally oh you think that's funny that's not funny obviously y'all i'm in there going through it at that point so they gave me the pitocin and at first i'm not feeling nothing they coming in there like you're having contractions how are you doing i'm like i'm like i got this like epidural what epidural who not me i ain't getting no epidural like i am so doing so well so they would come in there every hour and turn up the Pitocin. Every hour and turn up the Pitocin. So they turned it up and they were giving me, I don't know, the number was at like five or something. And they were like, okay, um, we have to turn it back down because it looks like his heart rate is starting to drop. So I'm like, oh my gosh, so I started getting nervous. So the doctor comes back in there and talks to me and is like, hey, I just wanna let you know, there may be a possibility for an emergency C-section. If his heart rate starts dropping again, we're not gonna hesitate. We're just gonna take you in for an emergency C-section. I'm like, what? No. So I start freaking out, crying. They're like, don't cry. Da -da -da, trying to console me. Okay. Fast forward, they up the Pitocin to like 12, right? So then the contractions start hitting in. So I'm like, ooh. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. You got me. You got me contraction. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, cool. Then it was like, ooh, ooh. I'm like, oh, what's, what, 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 what's all this about? What's all this about? So the lady coming in there, she's like, the nurse comes in there she's like how you doing like do you want to get some pain management i'm like i got this i got this right so at this point they're like every three to four minutes i'm like ooh, okay ooh, ooh, okay like i'm starting to feel it so but i'm still not like you know just in super pain like i'm not just like oh my gosh i can't take it so then another doctor comes in there and tells me um, the heart rate is kind of shaky. It's a little bit shaky. Like it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. So I'm like, isn't that what's supposed to happen during contractions? She's like, yeah, but yours is getting, his is getting too low and it's taking too long to come back up. She was like, and it seems like the contractions are starting to stress your body. So we recommend giving you an epidural. So I'm just like, they had also told me this before they gave me the Pitocin because of my situation. They wanted to give me an epidural. So I'm just like, no, like don't talk to me about an epidural. I don't want an epidural. So then 30 minutes later, the nurse comes in there. Are you sure you don't want an epidural? They just kept on epidural, 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 epidural. So at, in it, while this is all happening, they're up in the Pitocin, up in the Pitocin, up in the So y'all, at like nine o'clock, them contractions, was like I would say every 45 seconds and I was in excruciating pain I have never felt pain like that it felt like a thunderstorm in my stomach y'all know how a thunderstorm be like it look like the sky just going crazy that's how it felt imagine that happening in your stomach though like how I felt I was just like oh my god like trauma like shaking Y'all, nothing was helping. First of all, I'm in there. It's cold, right? You know, hospitals, it's cold. I started getting so hot. So I had on two gowns, you know, one to cover that back area because they were trying to have you just all exposed. So I'm like, take my gown on. My husband, bless his heart, y'all, bless his heart. He really looked out for me. So I'm just like, take, take it, take it off, take it off, take the gown off, take it off. I'm hot, I'm hot. Take it off, take it off, take it off. He take it off. Put it back on, put it back on, I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold. Then I was in there like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, take my socks off, take my left sock off. I don't know what it was about that left sock. Take my left sock off, take my left sock off. <sighs> put it back on, put it back on. Stand me up, sit me down, lay me down, adjust my bed. I want to lay flat, I want to sit up. This is literally the emotions I was going through. He was accommodating me with everything. So I was like standing up, sitting down. I was like, I want to drink a water. Then I was like, trying to signal to him to not talk. I'm like, then I was just like, okay, Naima, you need to calm down. Cause y'all, I took all the classes. I took all the classes. I went to the Lamaze class, I took everything. So I was just like, you know what? He needs to calm down. He's not gonna get nowhere being like this. So then when I would get a contraction, I would just be like. And then I couldn't take it, y'all. I started crying like I was five years old. I was like, <laughs> like I was crying, like loud, ugly cries. 
yelling out my nurse bless her heart also she was so sweet like she stayed in there in the room the whole time like you know they be going and coming back and checking on you once the, the pitocin was at like a 12 she stayed in there because she was like i want to be able to treat you as soon as you need something so if you tell me i gotta go to the bathroom i feel like i gotta go take a number two like i want to be there so i really appreciated that so she seen it and she just was like she was in her chair like this oh <laughs> Waiting for me to be like, ma'am. So then I, I didn't say nothing to her. I was still trying to hold on strong, y'all. So she came and she said, do you want anything for pain, dear? And I was like, I turned to my husband. I said, I wanted to do it natural. <laughs> he said, it's okay, babe. It's okay. He said, it's okay. I just want you to feel better. It's okay. He looked so scared for me. He said, it's okay. And so then I turned back there. I was like, oh, the epidural. She's like, we can start off small. Give me some. I said, I want the epidural. I want the epidural. Give me the epidural. <laughs> so she was like, okay, say no more. So y'all, I got that epidural. And the person who gave it to me, I don't know if that's normal. She was so mean. She was like, stand up straight. Don't move. Just like yelling and stuff at me. But I didn't care at that point. I'm like, give me something to get rid of the thunderstorm that is in my stomach. Like I needed to be gone. So she gave me the um the epidural. Of course, it doesn't completely take away the pain, but it took about 80% of it, y'all. Yeah. So this is at like nine o'clock. Mind you, at nine o'clock, 9.30, I was still, guess what? Three centimeters dilated. So it's like, I got seven, what, I gotta be 10? Yeah, I got seven whole centimeters to go. The pain is ridiculous. They still trying to up the, pitot the pitocin. I'm like, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to take this. Now, she would have checked me and told me, you eight centimeters, you almost there. I probably would have got the epidural. But just the fact that I, I got to the hospital at nine and we're talking about 12 hours later, I'm still at three centimeters dilated. Give me the epidural, stop playing these games. So then I was able to get some sleep. So um, they came and checked me around one o'clock in the morning. They said my amniotic fluid was super, super low. So y'all, they took a bag of, I don't even know what it's called, saline water. And they took a long tube and they took that tube and stuck it up me. And they said they were putting it into my uterus. I had never heard of that. And they were giving me fluid because my amniotic fluid was low. Have y'all heard of that before? Have y'all heard of that before? Then they said they wanted a more accurate heart rate for him. So they took this little bitty monitor and also stuck it up me. Cause they said they wanted to get his heart, accurate heart rate. It was a lot going on. And so, um, they were, coming, they were coming in there like every hour to check me and I wouldn't let them check me because it was the most painful thing. To have them go up there with them two fingers, it hurt so bad, like excruciating. The lady would put the gloves on and just stick her two fingers up and I would just start screaming because I already knew the pain that was coming. So I was like, you know what? Don't check me no more. So she's like, we have to check you. I was like, no you don't. She's like, we don't know how far along you are if we don't check you. I was like, okay. I'll let you know when I'm ready. That's what I have to tell them because even with the epidural, I was in excruciating pain when they were checking me. So I'm like, I'm not about to deal with this. Like, I'm just not. So basically, long story short, let's let's go to about what time is it? He was born at five something. So at this point, it's like 4.45, y'all. I woke up and I could feel the contractions even more. So the nurse comes in there. She had left at that point because we were all asleep. My mom was there too, my husband. My nurse comes in there and she's like, um, your epidural is about to wear off. I just want you to know that. And she's like, we can't give you another one. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> she's like, I just want you to know it's about to wear off. So I'm like, oh my goodness. So she's like, do you want us to check you? So I'm just like, no, I don't want you guys to check me. Like, I just don't. So I'm starting to feel the contraction, starting to feel the contraction. So she leaves. Five minutes later, I was like, I feel like I need to push. I promise you guys, it felt like out of nowhere, I went from not needing to push to needing to push. And it's like, when they say you know, you know. Our bodies are so incredible, you guys. When you know, you know. Like your body will signal to you what you need to do. So I felt like I needed to push. I was like, I feel like he is like right there. It, feel, it felt like I had to take a dump, like a really big dump. I know that sounds TMI, but whatever. It felt like, he right there and I need him to get out like it was pressure that's the word I'm looking for it was a lot of pressure so um I woke up my husband I was like get the nurse get the nurse I feel like he's coming I feel like he's coming so the nurse comes in there she's like can I check you and I was like yeah you can check me I was like because I feel like he's right there y'all she didn't even make her fingers she didn't even get up there like hardly any she was like I feel hair and I was like oh my god he's coming 
me. So y'all, they called all these specialists in because they were worried about, um, they called some, like, some nurses and doctors from the NICU and some other kind of specialists because like you said, like I told you guys earlier, they thought he was four, under four pounds. So they were prepared to like work on his heart, give him oxygen. Oh yeah, and they had given me oxygen along the process. They said my oxygen was low, y'all. It was so much going on. So, um, the doctor, I mean, the uh, nurse comes in there. She's like, okay, I'm going to start getting you ready to push. She was like, but don't push yet. She was like, because I have to call the doctor. So I'm just like, okay, okay. So everybody's starting to gather around. They're getting my legs propped up. The lights is coming on. They're getting ready. I'm like, oh, my God, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And so they're like, are you ready to push? Are you ready to push? And I'm just like, I think so. I think so. And it was like, you got to do it. You could do it. You could do it. You get ready to meet your baby. And so to my husband, he just like locked eyes with me. He was like, you're about to meet Chasm, babe. You're going to meet Chasm. You want to meet Chasm? You can do this. And I was like, okay. Okay. Let me tell y'all, the support was real. You need, like, have your, your man, your significant other, your husband, boyfriend, whatever, have him in there with you. And he needs to be a for real cheerleader because you need that. Like, you need that extra you know, confidence. If it's not him, get your mama, your sister, your best friend, your auntie, your grandma, whoever is your cheerleader, get them in there with you, you guys, because that extra support goes a long way. So I'm sitting there, right? So at first I push, and they're like, we can see here, we can see here. So they're telling me, they're like, okay, one, two, three, go, right? So I push. Then they're like, okay, stop, 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 stop. One, two, three, go, push. So on my third push, I felt, I felt like I could push harder, but y'all, I was afraid of ripping. I was afraid I was going to just rip open. And so... Um, uh, the doctor was like, you got to get this baby out of here right now. She was like, I'm concerned about his heart. She said, if you do not push him out, I am going to have to cut you. And I was like, no, I do not want to be cut. So the next push, I like really gave it a hundred percent. Like I was like pushing, pushing, pushing. So she's like, that's good. That's good. So they go and get a mirror so I can see my progress. Y'all, this much of his head was out. And everybody over here, good job, good job, good job. I'm like, y'all playing with me. I'm thinking his head is halfway out there. There's literally this much. And so they was like, you almost got it. So then she was like, you know what? I'm going to have to go get my vacuum and just um, suction him out. I was like, no, no. She was like, your baby going to have a cold head. I was like, I don't want him to have no cold head. So <laughs> she was like, well, get him out of here. Get him out of here. So then everybody's like, you can do it. You can do it. Like pumping me up, like trying to make me feel good. So y'all, I like sucked in deep. And I was like, ugh. And he was, his head popped out in like seven pushes. So he came out and they laid him on me and I just grabbed him and I was like, my baby, my baby. I was crying. You remember that, Cass? Yeah, he do. He do. I mean, before um, I went into labor, I was talking to a couple of my friends about the ring of fire. And some of my friends told me that they told me about it. I don't remember them telling me about it, but it's real, y'all. That area that where the baby comes out of it it was a burning sensation and so that was why i was so afraid to push as hard as i could because i felt like my area was just gonna be like Boop, and just open up all the way like i was literally afraid of that so i was super super scared to do that and it was like burning but when she, i started thinking about cone head and then i started thinking about getting cut and i was like oh no i got to push i gotta try i'm like i have to so he came out and then, you know, they laid him on my chest. And y'all, I always say that was the happiest day of my life because it literally was the happiest day of my life. Like, having my baby was so special. Yeah. He came out at like 5.04. And y'all, he was a whole five pounds, six ounces. They were completely wrong. He was completely healthy. No health problems, no health issues. We went home the next day. Everything was a-okay. But they freaking scared me and dared me into thinking something was going to be wrong with my baby. So yeah, so then after that, they just took out the um the afterbirth, and um that was it, y'all. So and then you know they moved you to another room, all that good stuff. And my recovery was pretty good. Like I didn't have, I didn't tear, so I didn't have to get any stitches or anything like that. I just had a very normal recovery. I only bled a little bit afterwards. Um, I had to wait for my epidural to, to wear completely off before I could walk again. Those kind of things. It was pretty standard. Um, so yeah, that is my labor and delivery story. I hope you guys made it through this whole entire video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a couple of little laughs. I hope it took you back to when you had your baby. Um, comment down below your most memorable moment during labor. Um, if you don't have any kids and you were there 
when um, maybe your sister had a kid or your best friend or your cousin or something, comment down below the most memorable moment during their labor. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like it, to subscribe. Make sure you drop that comment. And I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out, y'all. Say peace out, y'all. Say peace out, y'all. Say it's been real. So I'm about to go drink my milk. Because that's all I care about. And I got on one sock now. Look. <laughs> all right, y'all.